I'm here, Director of Communications for the Arizona Senate Republicans, and joining me today is Senator Vince Leach of District 11. Unfortunately, we have not seen any relief with rising prices, the price of gas, price of rent, price of food, energy, etc. This is all part of the federal government's failed policies, Biden administration just not making smart moves. And unfortunately, families are hurting desperately as we are approaching a recession. This is absolutely brutal. Uh, I've got a few more years on my on, on my body than, than you. Mm -hmm. I can remember uh, back in the early days, back with Carter, we had uh, uh, excessive inflation and mm -hmm. things went crazy. Uh, interest rates were up at 27%. Nothing like we're seeing now, yeah. absolutely nothing. The report that just came out, uh, wholesale goods are up 8.5%. 8, 8 I, I've got this note here about gas prices, the average of gas price. I, when I came in this morning, uh, it was $4.99, right down the street here yeah. from the Capitol. Uh, we're a little bit better in Tucson. We're yeah. about 75 cents cheaper yeah. just because of location. Uh, this gas price, and we've now, you're going to continue to see the gas price go up. Uh, we've depleted our reserve, and so now we have to go back to the open market, the open market, and we saw OPEC is, is going to cut production. So we look at uh, the average price of gas right now in the state of Arizona. AAA is reporting today it's four fifty six. When we go back just one year, it was $3.30, and families are feeling this. Well, it takes away. It takes away from spendable yeah. income. That's what it does. Or people, there was, a, there was a blip on one of the news shows yesterday. I don't know as I was flipping through channels. Uh, the people are now actively looking to change their vacation schedules, their time off, uh, including the holidays, where they'll be going for the holidays, how far it is. And that's unfortunate. That's, and and it's, that shouldn't be. It, it doesn't have to be. We have the product here. Uh, it's like our raw materials. We have raw materials in the ground. We have refineries to work at. Let's get it out of the ground. Let's get it to the refineries and let's uh, drop that price. It's, it's unbelievable. I've got some numbers here. Chicken, chicken is up 31 percent. Uh, whole milk up 17. Large eggs. I'm trying to figure out uh, why eggs are up 82 percent. I, uh, we were talking before we went on here. Uh, I, yesterday I stopped in the store. I was on the way home, and my wife said, "Bring a head of lettuce, two dollars and forty-nine cents." And I'm like, I, and I asked the counter, I said, is this right? Did I get the right one? Or is, is it what's organic? That? Is it organic? <laughs> yeah. In fact, that's what my wife yeah. said when I said, is, is it organic? I said, no. It, you know, it had the thing where you pick out one and they all tumble down. Yeah. That's where I got it from. And, and as a result, we're seeing people having to pick up multiple jobs just to cover, make ends meet. And it's very deflating when you can't provide for your kids, for your wife, for yourself um, with the state of this economy. Well, the, the American way is always, you know, one step we want to have it better than your parents, better yeah. than your parents. We're not going in that direction right now. And, and with the housing costs uh, all across the state of Arizona, uh, you know, 46, I saw a number 46 percent rise in, in rental. Yeah. You just, we were talking prior to going on, you've seen a, a rent mm -hmm. increase. Uh, it's just, and, and interest rates are going up. Uh, they went up a full point. I was talking to realtors in my district uh, and, and they're seeing a dramatic, where they, just a while ago, they were, when they were selling a house, it was how much you were over asking price. Yeah. Now they, the, the, the houses are showing up on the market, but there are no, no, no people to buy. So there are obviously a lot of policy changes that need to be made at the federal level, but when we come down to the state level, what is the state doing to help people out? Well, unfortunately, we, we, we don't have the magic wand that can drop get grass, gas prices. We don't have the magic wand to drop egg prices and milk prices, or, or local governments have more to do on the rent, uh, on the rent side by making properties available for multi-housing units. Uh, and, and we are going to see an influx of people into the state of Arizona because of some of the things we did. Namely, the biggest one was the 2.5% flat tax that we put into effect actually two years ago, and then the court said, yes, it is constitutional. That will draw people. People are escaping. 
from Illinois, from California, from New Jersey, the high taxes that are, California is a 13%, they're gonna be coming here. That puts more stress on our housing market. Uh, it's, it's good because those that have a job and have function, we're at least letting them keep more. And because our economy was so good, that tax uh, reduction is gonna go into effect in 23 rather than 24. It's not immediate, but it's gonna go into effect. Additionally, we paid down huge amounts of debt with the buildings, we paid down debt with our pension. All that takes money and, and pushes money back into the general fund that we don't have to come to people and say, you know what, we're a little skinny now, we're thinking about having a tax increase. That's the last thing we wanna do from these buildings and with the governor is have a, have a tax increase. It doesn't make any sense when people are really hurting to make ends meet, to do those extra things, or just to live, just to live, to come with a tax increase, it's, it's beyond me. And, and I have that in, my in part of my district. We reduce taxes in the city of Tucson is, re is increasing feed costs. So diving into this tax cut a little bit more, we have fiscally conservative Republicans that have been running our state for the past eight years now. And so this has brought us to a place where the government has been smart with money. And because the government has been, the state government has been so smart with money, we are able to now accelerate that tax cut to January 1st of 2023. And so now we're going to have families that on average will get about 300 to $400 uh, extra in their wallet that they may not have otherwise had if our state was not in a financially sound position as it is now. So when I came into these two buildings uh, in 2015, we were the worst state in all of the country per capita on debt. We were deeply in debt and we were floundering. If you look at uh, Alex's proposal or the Alex's book that they put out, Rich States, Poor States, we are number one in economic performance and number three in outlook. That is fantastic. That bodes well for the groundwork that the state legislature has done over the last eight years by getting out of debt, putting money in the rainy day fund, lowering taxes, lowering, in some cases, property taxes on business, mm -hmm. getting all that down so people aren't sending so much every quarter or every every week to the to the state government We're, we've done that we've set a good a, a good base for growth uh, but these types of numbers are really really brutal and probably is not going to be better for a while we have to get a stream of gas uh, and, and petroleum products uh, and i was in the store this weekend our shelves are not full yeah. something that you buy every two weeks is simply not there. Yeah. And it's not because the old, there's a rush on toilet paper and everybody buys, or like we had the COVID situation, everybody bought uh, uh, all the paper goods they could get. It's not that, it's just that the stream of product is, is so discombobulated that it's not there and they don't know when they're gonna get it. Yeah, what's your, do you have a final message of hope for people that are struggling, that are trying to figure out what bills they're going to be paying over the next few months as we approach the holidays. Again, I know this tax cut's going to be huge for Arizona, but it doesn't take effect until next year, and it will help take well, some- Well, message, the message is, is we have set, uh, the legislature along with the governor have set a, a bar, uh, I call it a high bar, yeah. uh, but it's actually a very low bar on the state's needs and requirements. So from a state standpoint, we're not gonna go asking people for more money to take more money out of their checkbook. Now, what we need to do is long-term, we need to bring more businesses in, and we're doing that. Intel is expanding, the chip people are coming in, the, the, uh, yeah, yeah, the, the Taiwan chip manufacturer, and those businesses that supply those are coming in. We've seen some growth uh, just in this last couple of weeks in Casa Ground where companies have introduced uh, uh, businesses that will be supplying this. Those are gonna give jobs, good paying jobs. And so now we have to have the, the stream of people to fill that. The workforce. Yes, we need the workforce development through our colleges, through our uh, community colleges and, and our high schools. It's going to be a little painful for the next year or so, and, and Arizona's going to do all they can, I think. Yeah, and that's, that's, that's a, maybe a good final yeah. point. We don't have the answer on 
eighteen percent increase in, in food prices, or in some cases uh, thirty-three or eighty-two percent in the case of eggs. We can't fix that. What we can fix, we did fix. Mm -hmm. All right, Senator Vince Leach from District Eleven. Thanks for joining us today. Thank you.